this is part of our work in my doctorate in astronomy. Uh, it's a very interesting opportunity to be presenting here because, well, I'm from Argentina, and if this wasn't made virtually, it would have been uh, almost impossible for me to attend. So it's this format of virtuality is, well, has, it has its uh, benefits, you know? But well, uh, let's get started. We, uh, this year, we published a paper where we presented a collisional evolution model of the main melt. And we named it ACDC, not because of the legendary rock band, but uh, it means Asteroid Collisions and Dynamic Computation. Nice name we put it. Well, it's a collisional evolution model of the main belt, uh, and it is multi-part. And this means that the main belt of asteroids, we split it into six regions. We also included the Yarkovsky effect, a very general model of the Yarkovsky effect per region of the main belt, and we treat uh, the big impacts as stochastic events. Well, this was published in Julie, in Julie, in Astronomy and Astrophysics with an application of this collisional evolution model to the near-Earth asteroids and the source regions of near-Earth asteroids. So if you want to check it out, it's, uh, it's available. Well, what we use in this work is this model onto Sirius and Vesta. So now I will briefly, very briefly describe uh, this collisional evolution model of the main belt. I said it's a multi-part model. What we did, we followed uh, an earlier work of collision and evolution made by Sibulkova and collaborators. Um, they split the main belt in six parts. And these parts are bound by the major re resonances in the main belt, like the resonances with Jupiter 3-1, 5-2, 7-3-2-1, and the new six resonances. And the regions are inner, middle, pristine, outer, civil, and high inclination. Well, in particular, Vesta is located in the inner belt and Ceres is located in the middle belt. And these authors, uh, well, they calculated uh, the, mutual, uh, the mutual impact probabilities and velocities for all pair of regions, all possible between, uh, pair of regions in the belt. Uh, well, it's a collisional evolution model. What does this mean? Uh, two bodies impact, a body of size, um, a target, and an impactor. They collide. Depending on the energy, on the specific energy of this, uh, of this impact, uh, it can be a catastrophic disruption event or a cratering event. And the result of a collision is a largest remnant and a fragment size frequency distribution. And the quantity that dictates uh, the outcome of this event is the scaling law, is this fraction QD. And in this work, we used uh, the scaling law of bends and asphalt for basalt at five uh, kilometers. We use this uh, as a general model for the entire main belt. Uh, well, the scheme of the simulations, well, is very much like this. In each uh, time step, we calculate for each pair of target and projectile pairs located in the different regions of the main belt, we calculate the number of impacts. And uh, the, the big impacts, we calculate them stochastically with a random seed and Poissonian distributions. Then, according to these impacts, we evolve uh, the number of objects of each region as a function of size. We add the, in each size we, we add the fragments created and we remove the asteroids destroyed in these collisions and we remove the asteroids removed via the, the combined effect of the Yarkovsky effect and the mean motion resonance. 
and we do this for four giga years. Uh, this one, very, very general description of the model. Well, what we do, what we did, is we applied this model, this collisional evolution model, to Ceres and Vesta, which are uh, the most massive members of the main belt, and they were visited by the Dawn spacecraft uh, of NASA. Uh, and well, they provided us a lot of information on Ceres and Vesta. Well, Ceres particularly is a middle belt, it's located in the inner belt, it's partially differentiated with a crust, a surface that a mixture of rock and ice. And Vesta is located in the inner belt and is a differentiate, differentiated rocky world. So well, the, one of the things that Don showed us, uh, particular Vesta has a very had a very intense collisional history. Uh, there are two huge basins, two huge uh, impact craters that are overlapping. One is Ria Silvia of uh, 500 kilometers overlapping, another uh, impact crater called Venea of uh, 400 kilometers. And regarding Ceres, uh, it was uh, what was observed in Ceres is that it lacked uh, large craters. It was highly depleted in craters uh, larger than 100 kilometers, and there, are, there were no uh, craters found uh, greater or larger than uh, 2,080 kilometers. And this was stunning because collisional models predict uh, a lot of more of of these uh, craters. But uh, Marky and Hisinger in 2016 uh, read some papers about the, this subject in particular, and they found some structures, some depressions that could be uh, relics from uh, impact basins that happened a long time ago. In particular, there's this uh, 800 kilometer uh, crater of depression associated with a possible uh, impact basin called Vendimia Planitia and other two depressions. Well, what we did here, we use, uh, we perform collisional evolution runs on the main belt, but focusing on what happens on Ceres and Vesta. In particular, we, we record the impacts on both Ceres and Vesta, uh, all the impacts they received from projectiles uh, larger than 100 meters. And out of this, well, we will derive impact or science frequency distributions and, uh, more interestingly, identify the source region of the impactors. Science, since we're using a partitioned main belt model, we, we, we will use that to identify where those impactors came from. And well, what about the, uh, identify the craters made by these impactors. And well, uh, we're not covering this on this talk, but uh, the work we are uh, we're writing that we hope we can publish it or send it uh, soon enough, will also deal with the fragments ejected in these impacts. But we will not cover this in this talk, just mention. Well, uh, we perform, uh, we have to perform, perform a big number of runs because since we are, we are working with stochastic events, we're dealing with stochastic events, uh, different runs may yield diff may much different results. So our first restriction of runs uh, is the comparison with the main belt science uh, size frequency distribution. We use this function, this C squared metric, which is uh, well, following both Botke and the work of Sibulkova. We calculate this quantity uh, and, and we calculate this for all of the six regions in each run. Uh, a low number of this indicates that the fit is good in that region. But what happens? Uh, a good a run can be per, 
can provide a good fit in one region, but provide a terrible fit in another region of the main belt simultaneously. So what we do, we calculate an average, a simple average uh, a metric, uh, C squared, by averaging in every run, uh, in in every run, we calculate the the, ah, the average of this quantity, and we select the ones that give us uh, smaller than 100. And well, we perform uh, 106,000, uh, 1,600 runs. Well, out of this, we can filter uh, approximately 25, uh, 26 runs. But well, not all these, also these runs provide reasonable fits with the main belt in general. But what we are interested in is the craters that this uh, formed. We will do another restriction with this based on the craters on Festa. Well, for this, this is the scaling loss we used in this work. Uh, you, we use mostly the, the scaling law of Holzapel and Hausen, uh, which is this expression of the transient crater. The series, well, series is an ice and rocky mixture in the surface, but Hisinger, uh, in his work of 2016, uh, he said he found that the morphology in these craters is similar to the icy satellites of Saturn. So we use the parameters of an ice surface. And the value of strength, we found it uh, to be consistent with the transition diameter. Well, we use this expression for the final crater size uh, following the work of Krauss. And the, for best, we use the wet soil and rock of Hosa. Well, uh, like I said, we want to reproduce, we want to select the runs that are able to reproduce the basins on a uh, series and Vesta. Uh, we see that this is on the on the left we have the largest in, the pair of largest impactors uh, and the craters that they form. Uh, these are the what we want are the to find the the sorry. Uh, we want to find the impacts that made uh, this, uh, we can reproduce these craters. Uh, well, I'm short of time, so I'll move on. Well, the size frequency distribution of impactors, we find this uh, for one of these runs. In particular, we found for Vesta, the two largest impactors are 77 kilometers and uh, 50 kilometers, which is consistent with the previous estimation of the projectiles that form these largest impactors. But what is interesting of this is the relative contribution of the impactors. Uh, what we find uh, is that for series located in the middle belt, the outer belt, this is uh, beyond the 7.3 resonance, the outer belt is the main source of impactors. We find that this is the source of more than half of impactors, while the middle belt is the secondary source with approximately 20%. And we also see that the, this relative contribution uh, remain similar in the size we are considering. And regarding to Vesta, which is located in the inner belt, we find an approximately even share of impactors between inner, middle, and outer belts. The outer belt is uh, slightly larger, but it's approximately 25% each. Uh, well, regarding the cratering for series, what we, with this scaling loss, we, I stated All the craters produced by these impacts. What is important is that we are not considering any any erosion process, any removal process, or obliteration process of craters. It's just 
all the all that hit Ceres and Vesta during their lifetime were all those craters. So obviously, uh, or prediction or simulation or or value of the size frequency distribution is over the top, is on top of the observed population. This is the catalog of Go 2019. And what we find is we find one crater of 900 kilometers, which is the would be the one suggested by Marky, and a second one of 600 kilometers, which is also consist consistent with the one suggested by Marky. And for Vesta, um, for Vesta, well, we can reproduce the craters larger than 100 kilometers. The, the, we, com we compare it with the catalog of Liu of 2018. So well, what our conclusions summing up, uh, we perform a collision and evolution model uh, and focus on what happened on Sirius and Vesta. For Vesta, we found an even shadow impactors between the inner, middle, and outer belts, and we reproduced the craters larger than 100 kilometers in Vesta. For Sirius, we find that the outer belt is the main source of impactors, and this is interesting because uh, since the outer belt is mostly C-type asteroids filled with organics and volatiles. What will be the implications of this on the surface properties of Ceres? And well, Ceres received a large impacts, uh, large of uh, approximately 100 kilometer impact, and we were able to reproduce two of the suggested larger uh, depressions in Ceres associated with uh, impact craters. Uh, well, thank you. Hope I didn't go too fast on the last part. <clears throat> thank you, Patricio. Um, that was very interesting stuff. Um, I've been working with Simone a little bit on the that whole missing craters problem on series. So mm -hmm. cool. Looks like there are several questions in the chat. So All I'll right. hand it over to Stuart. All right. I Yes, as the questions just scrolled off my screen. Uh, so Abedin asks, if you could fit a straight line of the size distribution of craters, uh, would that be the slope? Uh, or sorry, what would be the slope? I can't read. Uh, the slope or the size distribution of craters? Uh, didn't calculate it, so I'm not okay. sure. Okay. Um, they also asked, how exactly do you find the source where the impactor came from or did you mean to see uh, or that you see which populations can be Vesta and Ceres? Yeah well uh, this well, is part of the modeling what we did in the in the computational program we have uh, six arrays each one representing uh, the population one for the inner one for the middle one for pristine one for outer and one for the high inclination. And uh, every time there is an impact, the number of impacts with uh, the corresponding size bin of Ceres or Vesta in the respective population, we save, we save that information in uh, another array. That's, uh, well, that, this, well, this uh, things of the code, if you want, you can read it on the ways, uh, on the published paper of the, uh, how we did the uh, the arrays. Uh, well, in, in principle, we have the six arrays of uh, the population, which indicates the evolution of the uh, or the distribution of each region of the main belt as of in time. No, but well, we every time there's an impact on series on the size being on series, we save it and invest the same. Hope I answered your question. Yeah, sorry, I was seeing if there was a follow-up. Uh, so there was a question from uh, Sergio Montes. Have you thought about using this method to know the number of impactors in M-type asteroids like 16 Psyche? 
Well, we're planning on using this uh, on this same analysis or similar analysis in other asteroids. For example, Pallas or Hagia, which have, uh, there are uh, recently published uh, works of observation of these impacts. But well, we, we would like to uh, perform these runs on other type of asteroids. Okay, uh, there's another question. Um, Screen name Mala1813. Uh, if folks could put in their actual name, uh, that would be great. If your screen name is not showing up as your actual name, if you could put in your name in the question, that'd be great. Uh, the question is, how does your model compare to the quote unquote asteroid derived crater size frequency distribution given by Hesinger et al. 2016 in science? Yeah, well, uh, this, uh, what we used here is the, the catalog, the, we use the catalog published by Go, uh, which was published uh, in 2019, and it uh, includes uh, craters larger than one kilometer. And if I recall correctly, uh, the, they match very good, and uh, they match very good with Hisinger. So with Hisinger will be just from, 20 kilometers ahead, I believe. Um, but what well, we use this, uh, this catalog, which is like an updated version. Uh, but what, what we hear is, well, it's like to here. Uh, and this other uh, curve here is uh, including these two, these two uh, basins. Okay, uh, related to that, Paul Schenk asks, does this mean that the lunar-derived impact flux does not work for Venus, I'm sorry, for Vesta and Ceres? Uh, well, we don't, we, we didn't do chronology here. Uh, I believe there's a work uh, published uh, recently by Roy and Nesborny that they do, they did chronology on Ceres and Vesta, and one of the, our, if I recall, one of the conclusions was that uh, the lunar chronologies uh, didn't work as good as in Western series, but we didn't do chronology here. So uh, we just translated the impactors during four giga years into craters. Okay, a question by Paul Wren. Uh, would greater tidal disruption by Jupiter be the cause of greater outer belt objects impacting Ceres? Uh, uh, the, I don't know because, well, in this, in this work, uh, it's, not a, it's not dynamic. It's uh, collisional and statistic. So we, these are uh, orbitals, these aren't orbital simulations or dynamical simulations. These are uh, collisional evolution uh, with uh, the corresponding intrinsic probabilities uh, and uh, impact velocities. But it's a statistic collisional evolution, not dynamical evolution. So uh, this work it can't answer. Uh, 